from someone in float plane chat and you're uh, speaking of things linus was sold on getting that doesn't include a monitor uh or whatever oh that does okay no nope, i'm not sure where you're going with that i thought you were asking about the monitor so we uploaded the short circuit of the product that I was talking about that gave me a bigger gaming advantage yeah. than anything I've probably touched in the last 10 or 15 years. And what's that? Um, it's the 360 hertz OLED gaming monitor. Now look, I... What game were you playing? Halo Infinite. You got it at 360 FPS? Um, not quite 360, but really high. Okay. And yeah. you don't, it's not necessarily about that. It's, it's about the motion clarity of this display. I have talked in the past about the, about the limited rate of return as you go from, or, or the, 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 the reduced return going from 60 to 120, then from 120 to 240, then from 240 to 360, or even 480 hertz, right? Like the, the, the difference between all of those, it becomes less and less and less and less. But the low persistence, the image clarity, the motion clarity of this display is incredible. Like, dude, I couldn't miss. And this is this is over. Oh, this is over two different sessions with the monitor, because first I recorded the. So you weren't just like on one day. I recorded the video that was sponsored by Samsung Display on the panel tech. We uploaded that to LTT uh, during the show. Actually, did really well, and it was like it was your perfect sponsored video because Samsung basically went, um, "We have money to market this." Uh, we think it's really, really great. So here's our bag of marketing money. Um, we'd like you to thank these Nobel Prize winners for the amazing research and development that they've done to make this technology possible. Um, please um, discuss, you know, some of the advancements that we made in our like pico freaking um, ink jetting process for you know increasing the pixel density, and um, otherwise, see you later. <laughs> So we we pretty much just made the video we would have made anyway. Yeah. And <laughs> included like, some shadows that are cool anyways. And included some shadows that were cool anyway. And uh, I got an opportunity to check these things out before I would have gotten a chance to, which I love anyway. So it was it was it was an ultimate kind of win-win-win. And part of that shoot was over two different sessions. So first, while we were doing the shoot, and then after the shoot, I actually got like on a little bit as well. With no audio, I was sitting there putting together like five kill streaks. <laughs> then things got really interesting because I was just on the LTT benchmark account that time, which is not ranked at all. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. and I'm not saying that my personal account is super ranked up or anything either, but it is ranked like I am. It was pretty good at one point. It, it, yeah. It's been a long time though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it, but it, it's it's a lot. It'll. It'll match make me with different people than the LTT benchmark yeah, account. Yeah. So during the short circuit. I was signed into my account because we had some issues with our Microsoft credentials for LTT Benchmark, or actually it was for, um, whose was it? I think it was Ploof's, it was Ploof's account because he was the one who was working on the other monitor the previous day or something like that. So I was less signed into my own account and same thing, both on camera and off camera. Dude, I just, I couldn't be stopped. And the thing is, you're probably watching that going, man, I've seen, you know, I've seen compil compilations that are like so much better than this. Right. But that's, that's the thing. I'm not that good. You guys have seen me play video games many times over many years. And it's not about, it's not about just the hurts because you can make a very strong argument for there being a certain number of hertz past which there there could not possibly be any perceivable difference to a gamer because our reaction times are measured in milliseconds so if the difference between minor getting slower yeah the difference between one monitor and another is two milliseconds or, or one millisecond or a fraction of a millisecond like you're not going to you're not going to notice that right but it's about the constantness of the input that you're getting and the a better ability to track a moving object, which we've talked about before and also said there's a limited return on that continued investment. But that combined with the motion clarity yeah. is what really changed the game for me. 
because every single frame is a crystal clear image. Now, what's interesting, uh, further interesting, uh, what's also interesting is that NVIDIA is working on their own approach to solving this that does not involve OLED and that they claim it's hard for me to tell because I didn't have them side by side, but, but it's really good. But they claim gives even better low persistence, like even better motion clarity than this 360 hertz OLED. And that's, um, shoot, I forget what they're calling it, but it, that's on in the short circuit video where we do, an un, we do the world's first unboxing of the 4080 Super. Uh, so we, we get through kind of the, the Super <coughs> lineup and then we move over to their new G-Sync demo and Basically, what NVIDIA has figured out... Pulsar, that's it. What NVIDIA has figured out... Is it called G-Sync Pulsar or yeah. NVIDIA Pulsar? What NVIDIA has figured out how to do is combine variable refresh rate with backlight strobing or essentially oh. what on an OLED would have to be like black frame insertion. So with, with backlight strobing to essentially like shine a snapshot of the most clear still of that frame at your eyes, then turn off the backlight while the pixels are all shifting. So this is on an IPS type display. And so you do get some overshoot artifacting. Um, so I talk in the video about how the character model and the text above their head kind of has a ghost in front uh -huh. at the leading edge, right? Interesting. Um, because you're seeing the beginning of that transition. Oh, that's really... I wonder if subconsciously if you're going to detect what way things are moving that way. But the... Well, that's not new. That's not new. What's new is just that the, mm. the image, the main image, is super clear and that you can do it with VRR now, which they couldn't before because, I mean, man, like, think about that. Backlight strobing with variable refresh rate means that... You have to drive the pixel change differently according to the different colors it's shifting between because all the transitions are different speeds. Then you have to drive them at different voltages depending on for how long that frame will be displayed because it could be different from one frame to the next. Like, what? <laughs> but it looks like they've cracked it. Uh, I do think personally just having seen some of those motion artifacts that I would prefer the OLED approach, even if the motion clarity isn't quite as good. But NVIDIA seems to think that for competitive gaming, their solution is going to be the better one. Hmm. Um, but, yeah, you know, it all remains to be seen. This is, it'll be locked in G-Sync. Um, so you'll have to have... Yeah, you'll have to be on NVIDIA. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, that's I, the goal. Yeah, that's 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 what Nvidia is all about. Make sure you get 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 in that ecosystem. So I I was I was blown away, man. Samsung display is crushing it right now, and that Alienware 360 hertz. Whatever Ploof says about the 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 bigger 240 hertz one, I. Uh, you guys got to do some blind tests. Well, we can't because they're different sizes. Hmm. So we so his his is 4K and uh, 32 inches, 31 and a half inches or something like that. The one that he likes better and 240 hertz. And the one I like better is the 1440p 360 hertz 27 inch. And there's a, there could be a number of reasons that, sounds, yeah. that I was finding that one better. It's obviously going to run at higher frame rates. So I'm going to have less latency from that <clears throat> in addition to the monitor refreshing more frequently. Uh, Ploof's a better gamer than me. Like, it's not close. He's, he's a significantly better gamer than me, so maybe it's one of those things where I need every edge that I can get. Um, I also found that having not gamed on a small monitor, like, not, like, really tried, you know, like, it, like it just started, it just started happening so well. I was like, oh, yeah, I, like, I got kind of into it. Um, and I haven't really done that in a long time. Like, my monitor at home is 38, 42 inches or something like that. So I haven't used a small monitor in a while, and there's a reason that competitive gamers use them. You can, yeah. you can see everything. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, like, first of all, I actually like 1440p as a resolution for a desktop monitor. I don't, I genuinely don't think I even want beyond that. Like, I've, I've seen the comparison. I don't think I care. I care more about like panel quality, stuff like that. Uh, in a TV, sure. Yeah, whatever. But I'm talking monitor. Um, and beyond 27 inches, I find starts to become like just unreasonable for gaming. Um, yeah, there's other people in the chat that are, you know, C again in full plane chat says, yeah, yeah, 27 inch for me is the sweet spot. Yeah, I agree. I know Ploof plays a lot of more scenic games as well, though. 
Yeah. And when you can be nice for that. If you're not talking competitive, you're talking if you're talking immersion, forget about it. And if you're if you're twenty seven inches like is like looking out through a submarine portable <laughs> yeah. uh, you know at the world compared to you know like a giant ultra wide or something like yeah. that and if you're trying to lounge and like get immersed sure 100% um, but I don't know I, that's I think that's one of the reasons why I like 27 inches is because it's kind of on the maximum threshold I would say of the competitive side so you get a little bit of both, I find. Of course, the topic we're supposed to be talking about right now is AI things at the show. So why don't we talk about the AI, AI monitor? monitor. What yeah, the heck? I would like you, without looking at chat. What's the point? Sure. I would okay. like you to yeah. try to get it. I genuinely have no idea. It has some kind of neural processor in the monitor itself. Okay. I will give you uh, a hint. It is nothing to do with image quality. Yeah, that was the only... I tried to dive on that. Yeah. Um, nothing to do with image quality. Nothing to do with image Could quality. Could you, like, change uh, inputs by speaking to it? That's a cool idea. No. No, not even a little. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, nothing to does do it have that. anything to do with controlling the monitor itself? No. <laughs> Would you like another hint? Yeah. Okay, it's from MSI. Well, it's a hint. What does MSI do? Okay, it's from it's from MSI's gaming division. Can you control like afterburner profiles or like launch games? No. Can you change RGB profiles? Um, there's an RGB element. Okay, is it like uh, whatever MSI software thing on your desktop, and you can interface with it that way? No. <laughs> I'm really running out of ideas. He's so frustrated. This is great. Okay, why don't I tell you before before you look before you look at anything? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't I tell you the RGB element, and then I'll see if you can guess the rest. Okay, sure. Okay, so um, using using their AI processing that is built into the monitor, mm -hmm. it's not like a like an external soft piece of software you run on your computer. So it's it's in the monitor. Is it, wait just one sec? Does this have to be web connected then? No, I don't think so. So it's local. I believe so. Okay, well, that's kind of neat. All right. Okay, so so using that, um, it has <laughs> like an RGB light bar at the bottom of the monitor that can that can mirror your health bar in League of Legends. <laughs> poor brain is just completely broken it's just so many things it, it's so unnecessary for it to be done this way oh this isn't the only product that i feel like that about to be very clear um uh, do you just control what information the light bar is doing through the thing so here's what it does okay it monitors elements on screen yeah and like, cause there's no, there's, to my knowledge, okay, there's no API ability <coughs> to do that. So, yeah, so it monitors a certain thing and, and... So it's, yeah, you tell it, hey, look here, and if it looks like this or like that or like that, change the light bar behavior, like, whatever. So it would be a way for you to have, like, a flashing notification if you're low Crazy. on health. And, and that is, uh, honestly, could be very easily used for cheating. Um, okay. <laughs> We're getting there. All right. Okay. Would you like to know what it does? What? Oh, I thought we just figured that out. No, that's what the, a light bar does now, for now. <laughs> okay. Would you like yeah. to know what the monitor yeah, yeah, does? Yeah. What does the monitor do? So the demo they had running. <laughs> see the smile on his face right now? Oh, God. It's about to be gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. The demo they had running was monitoring the minimap area. <laughs> and anytime an opposing hero oh. approached your viewport, it would pop up a, 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 a no. circle with an arrow indicating on the screen where they were on the screen, completely independent of any software <sighs> running on your PC. So, so as far as detectable. I can tell, completely impossible to detect. Because <laughs> it's drawn on top of the image coming from... Yes. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Uh... I wonder if anti-cheats are going to have to use, like, uh, hardware detection anti -cheats, and just ban those screens. They don't do much anyways, but... You, yeah, but you can you can spoof the edit of a monitor very easily. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's no way that'll help. We are going to have to have flipping a a camera. You're going to have to have a a dedicated camera. It doesn't always solve the problem. Like plugged into your computer, pointed at your freaking screen and your hands. Doesn't always solve the problem. Well, if it's pointed at your hands and your screen. There's still ways. It's going to be better. Yes. You will be able to. So they're going to have to have their own AI. That checks for any motion or any key press that doesn't correspond are, to what's happening. There are um, cheating softwares out there that are designed for when your chat asks you to point a camera at the screen. Um, it has a mode for that. Yeah, but what about the the hands too? Yeah, well they they don't they won't be aim hacking at that point in time. I don't actually think aim hacking is super popular these days because it's easier to detect than a lot of other forms. I just I think a webcam pointed at your hands and it's the gonna, screen. It's going to stop no, a I mean lot continuously. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't mean sometimes. I mean like <laughs> the anti-cheat <laughs> software is continuously this video feed? <laughs> continuously monitoring the video feed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like that's Sheesh, that's dude. the only solution I, at this point. It's it's an actual cheating monitor. That's amazing. I um Yeah, multi multiplayer games right now are just plagued completely plagued with cheaters um, uh, Tarkov because I like talking about Tarkov when it comes to cheaters because there sure do be a lot of them And it's a really brutal game to have them in um, They just did a ban wave of 11,000 players and people were responding to the tweet of this ban wave with screenshots of like extremely obvious cheating still going on and like there's one where it's like uh the flea market in the game which is like effectively like an auction house or a or a trading post or whatever you or want a to flea call market it. or a flea market yeah um, interesting <laughs> we definitely needed some alternate names for that <laughs> well no no like uh, i'm saying it works the same way no i know it's game. just a continuation of that thing you did last week where you were like what's a word for whatever <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that word you just said. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> um, oh, man. <laughs> Classic oh, Luke. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's... You can see people's profiles on there. So you can see someone like, oh, this person's like level 12 and they've sold like billions of r- rubles worth of stuff. On, like, yeah, probably not. Um, I don't know. It's a thing. Precedence. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, I thought you'd be I thought you'd be pretty ticked off. Yeah, that's about sick. That. Yeah, cheating monitors, especially because that cheating is. I think I, I would wager that cheating has probably been the worst in the first person shooter space. Shooters in general, probably. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think it's pretty bad everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, there's map hacking. Yeah, in like, like top down games, like StarCraft One, like have like map hacks. Like if you could just you see could remove fog of war, everything. That's, that's like an insane advantage. Yeah, um, but I don't. I don't think those have been as popular. I know uh, one of the ways. This this actually seemed really smart to me. I think this was League of Legends. I don't remember who it was. One of the ways that they helped push against map hacking mm-hmm. is the server. Oh, I might say this wrong. If you're interested in this, look it up because I'm probably going to say some part of how this works wrong, but I, I, I'm going to try. Um, the, the edge of your fog of war, if another player isn't within a certain distance of it, the server will not tell you where they are. So you, you actually can't map hack the whole way. Interesting. But if they are so within... So you can map hack a little bit. Yes. And then have a monitor yeah. that can check from your mini map then you could get an extra... Uh, another big one for this, for me, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, Rocket League, cheating in Rocket League. Yeah, there there are ways to cheat in Rocket League, but I think it's a little bit more blatant. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, something that's crazy about this is the monitor notification could probably linger. So if someone just, like, barely comes on screen for a second, and, you know, you're playing, so you're not staring at the minimap 100% of the time, you might not have seen it, the monitor notifications can be bigger, and could probably persist for more than that, like, one second. So, yeah, I don't know. That's rough. So Cheating yeah. has been around since the beginning, but I strongly believe it's worse now than it ever has been. My reasoning for that um, is the barrier of entry is zero right now. The barrier of entry right now is a credit card. That's it. You don't need to know anything. Back in the day, you kind of needed to know what you were doing. You kind of, you had to work to find them. Now there's like ads on YouTube. 
Like it's it's crazy now. It's blasted in front of your face constantly. Uh, there's no barrier of entry at all. You just have to pay for it. Um, it's it's never been easier to just get another copy of the game either. Uh, a lot of games yeah, are free have to, go to, to play. To the store. Yeah, that's another you know? barrier, right? Like yep. there's there's another layer on top of it. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's 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 just very rampant right now. So the solution is in person gaming events. Yeah. Or beauty contests. Yeah. Bring lands back. Uh, speaking of lands, I, I told Make Chase today again. it's going to be it's going to be another probably four or five months before the badminton center is built. So I was thinking we should do another land at my place, maybe like a bit lower key. Hopefully, I don't get sick for two months this time. Yeah, uh, maybe just just the basement this time. Nice, but um, ooh, okay. I talked to High Sense. Okay, this is not an AI topic. Good Lord. We could talk about CES probably for the entire show. Never do any merge yeah. messages. Never do any other topics. Sick. Um, I talked to High Sense about getting hands on with their 110 inch, and they're apparently going to work on it. This thing is wild. <laughs> Double the peak brightness of the TCL, which you saw. Whoa. Double 10,000 <laughs> nits peak brightness. Double the local dimming zones of the TCL you saw, 40,000 dimming zones, which, I mean... It already wasn't really a problem. I, I didn't see the, the classic black desktop background, white mouse cursor scenario, but in watching a variety of different movies, uh, it, it didn't seem like a problem. And uh, what, what else is there that's... I mean, that 90... <laughs> uh, Porto in full plane chat, bro wants a flashbang. Yeah, uh, <laughs> more like a flash the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Dan, Dan's, Dan's messaging me. It's one major topic with or many micro topics. Second one is the second one. Uh, yeah. Micro rapids. Sorry, what? They are micro rapid topics. Okay, all right, all right. Why did you pick a next main topic? <laughs> Notable non AI demos. Um, really? Okay. I'm interested. I think CES is interesting. It was a big TV show this year. Yeah. And for a long time, I was really bored by what was going on with TVs. Yeah. They were making them thinner. And it's like... I feel like you haven't cared about TVs since the one that you just got, like, basically. Oh my God. Who cares? Yeah, I don't care So what? It's thinner. It sits... It sits on a thing it's by like the wall. It's more annoying to carry around because it feels more fragile. Like it, it's like it's ridiculous, and like especially what LG was doing with their OLEDs for a long time, where they'd be like, like this thin at the top, and then have a giant caboose. Just it's like butt. who do they think they are? My wife. <laughs> she doesn't have a giant caboose. I just mean it's, it's all relative. Um, the oh my goodness. The point of the point is. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, the, the whole thinness war never made any sense to me. What were, what were we trying to achieve with I, any I of that? I liked it at the beginning. Sure, I mean... Because TVs were, like, big chunks. Sure, I mean, going from, but going from here to here was a lot more meaningful than going from here to, to here. Paper. And especially yeah. from here to, to, to here, right? Like, the, that, that TV that I've got in my theater room right now, the TCL, it's like this thick. And who cares? Do you notice that when you're watching content on it? No. No, of course not, because that's ridiculous. And then there was the, the bezel war that was kind of, kind of before that, kind of at the same time as that. To a degree, having thinner bezels, I would say, is a benefit. But I also think that there's a certain point you reach where... It probably doesn't matter that much, and yeah. for I, I still, you know, I think for for a show piece, if you want to have like a bezel-less TV or something like that, you know, for an art display or something, sure, yeah, absolutely. But in your general, you know, three ninety nine at Best Most Buy, people aren't going to care. Seven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine. I I don't think I don't think you need that at yeah. a, at a certain point. And then there was the resolution war, ten eighty p. Yeah, not the be all and end all, but it's fine for most things and 4k is to the vast majority of people out there very in, very good. indiscernible from from retina resolution and so you know for years at ces we were looking at you know world's first uh you know however many pixels per inch world's first yeah. 8k display world's yeah. first now i'm trying to remember we definitely saw ones that were higher resolution than 8k and we're kind of asking ourselves okay forget about the content let's assume you know upscaling gets perfect and we can watch any kind of content on this 
unless I get unless I get this class, and it was impressive. It's not like I wasn't like, wow, this is really cool. Like, Upscaling's not perfect, by the way. It, it was it was cool, but <laughs> unless you were getting you know this close, or you were trying to read a newspaper <laughs> on your TV, you know. Uh, it, 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 there wasn't there wasn't a clear there wasn't a clear use case for it right and i don't feel the same way about the brightness war because once you've experienced good hdr well, i didn't i i'm, I'm gonna put this out here before you go into the topic because i do think it's actually fairly important i've experienced hdr a few times i notably like didn't really like a lot of the examples that i saw because the certain bright parts of the screen would be so bright that they were like annoying to look at. I did not experience that with the really, really, really bright SDR at your place. Really? Did I, did we watch any HDR stuff? And did you feel that way about the HDR? Because I thought I threw on Mario movie. I think movie. we did, and it was also fine. Okay. Um, so like, I there there have been implementations of this that I have not actually liked at all. But more recently, trying that TV, it was very good. So well done. HDR. Yeah. It's freaking awesome because because that's what the world is like. And it's not about having a super bright image. That's not right. If that's what you've seen before, then it's not being handled right by your device or it's not been mastered properly. Yeah. Um, but we are nowhere near, even now, even with the 10,000 nit uh, TV that I was talking about from Hisense, we are even now not at the point where it is it is similar to, you know, Standing, standing in the outside. sunset. Yeah. Um, so I was I was talking to uh, Andrew, uh, one of our camera guys, about this when we were in the bus line for the shuttle after looking at the high sense TV. And I went, okay, dude. Actually, here, here. Can, can, like, look, 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 look with me. We were we were standing outside the convention center, and it was kind of approaching sunset. And one of the uh, one of the hotel towers that was like a glass tower was kind of catching a reflection of the sun that was like. It was it was it was dazzlingly bright, but not where you would be, you know, uncomfortable. It was yeah. just like, you know, the world that has a sun that shines on it, and sometimes it reflects off of things. <laughs> and I kind of went, okay, Andrew, how many nits do you think we would need to get there? Because it's something that our eyes can can process, and it's something we're going to have to achieve if we want HDR content to be like looking through a pane of glass into the world. And it was like, you know, hard to say, but a lot more than 10,000, which is one of the reasons why, and I, I, I agree, like it was, it, was, it was bright, but it was natural and we're not quite there yet. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that I am into the brightness war. Bring on 15,000 nits, bring on 20,000 nits, not because every element on the screen that is, you know, white, should be blasted at 20,000 nits into your face, but because key on-screen elements where you're trying to capture, you know, the, 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 the glinting of the sun off the top of the waves or, um, or a re, you know, a reflection in, uh, you know, a, an polished uh, knight's armor or something like that. Sure. Um, in order to accurately reflect that, pun intended, you need incredible incredible brightness. Um, and I think that what we're going to see is we're going to need ambient light sensors on TVs that are really good. Like we've had ambient light sensing on TVs for ages. The problem is that in the past, in a lot of cases, and I haven't, I haven't f with them in a long time because before they would always just trash the image quality. Yeah. I don't like, I, 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 I would, I'd hate it. They're pretty good on phones these days though. So maybe they've improved a lot on TVs, but we're going to need that because you're going to be sitting in a dark room and it's going to hit you with, you know, 20,000 nits. Your eyes won't be adjusted for it. And that's going to be a problem, but we're going to need perfect blacks and we're going to need like crazy, crazy high peak brightness in order to account for all the different environments where the TV might be used in order to really get that experience and make it feel more lifelike because that's what it does it increases immersion did i fire up lord of the rings when you were over as a demo fellowship yes yeah i was trying to think back did, did we look at any of the like outside boat yeah. scenes okay yeah like specifically the one where they go by the statues doing that compared to any other display that i've watched that on it was so much more natural and now you're telling me okay i can have another five thousand nits to, to to really make the the, the sun feel like Sun, yeah, not white. <laughs> Bring it on. 
<laughs> I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. Yeah. Um. Okay. What 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 am I supposed to be talking about right now? Oh yeah, right. Things that were not AI. Yeah. So Samsung's micro LED, um, the wall is better than before. They weren't really giving any specs, which was extremely confusing. Not only did they not have any displays up, but no one at the booth knew anything. <laughs> um, they knew sizes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, I was uh, like, one, one, thing you for, one thing um, you forgot to mention about that grill 